guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am so excited to share with you my Going Gold DIY projects. If you did not already know, September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month and their color is gold. So I decided to do three DIY projects to help spread awareness about childhood cancer. If you guys have been on YouTube for quite a while, you guys might remember Talia. She was a makeup artist and she was very, very young. I don't remember her exact age, but she passed away from cancer a couple years ago. So it has hit pretty close to home in our YouTube community. So I think it's very important that we talk about this topic and definitely spread more awareness and bring some light into the subject because it does not get talked about a lot. So anyway, I did three DIY projects that I really want to share with you guys and you guys could totally put these up all year round. You guys know I love gold and of course gold decor. I have a bunch back here and I have some others on my other shelf that's right across from me. Um, but I wanted to share these with you guys and I don't think I have much more to tell you guys at the beginning of this video. So without further ado, let's just get into my three gold childhood cancer awareness month DIY projects. So for our first DIY project, we are going to be making a motivational canvas art piece. So basically you're just going to need a canvas, whatever size you want. I got this one from Hobby Lobby. You're also going to need some Mod Podge, some gold glitter, a paper plate, some gold acrylic paint, some paint brushes, and you're also going to need a sponge dotting tool and acrylic sealant spray or hairspray. I forgot to include this. Um, so to get started, I just took my pencil and I traced the word that I wanted to have on my canvas. And to me, the word fighter just spoke volumes. I had other ideas like fearless and strong, but for some reason fighter was the word that I really wanted to go with on this. So, um, yeah. So once I got my word traced out in cursive, even though it's a little crooked, um, I then went in with my gold acrylic paint and my first coat and I started to trace my word. Um, and so I think with this gold paint, it was from deco art and it took about four coats to get my desired gold color, which I really love the color. I think it was beautiful. It literally has like glittery flakes in it. It's very, very nice. It's probably one of the, my favorite ones that I've ever worked with. And I've worked with a lot. <laughs> um, so yeah, so again, still tracing it and definitely watch the show or do something or hang out with somebody while you're working on this just to sort of pass the time um, in between, you know, each drying coat. <laughs> um, and then I went in with my fine tipped paintbrush and I just sort of crossed my T and then dotted my I. But for my I, I really wanted the little uh, cancer ribbon for the top. Um, and then at that point I was done with my first layer. <laughs> so I definitely set it out to dry. And then this is my third coat of the, um, uh, paint that I went in with. And so I didn't film the second one or the fourth one because it's pretty much the exact same thing. You guys might get a little bored from seeing the same step over and over again. Um, but yeah, so again, I think I did about four. You can de definitely do however many you want. Um, and then I decided I wanted to have the cancer ribbon, um, on my canvas and larger as well. So I traced it on in the corner and then I started on my polka dots. So basically I took my little sponge dotting tool, dipped it in my Mod Podge, and then, um, really kind of pressed it into my canvas to make sure that the Mod Podge stuck. And then and I poured my gold glitter over it, sort of shook it and tapped down onto the canvas and then dumped off the excess and then dumped that back into my container so we can recycle that um, and not waste all that extra glitter. And then this is just going to be to your liking. So you can sporadically put them wherever in this next part. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I accidentally just kind of dumped like the whole container and uh, it was okay. We were able to save a lot of it. Um, but again, yeah, this is totally up to your liking. However many you want, size you want, it's totally up to you. Um, I love the big polka dots. I love gold polka dots. That's been a favorite of mine for years. Um, and I thought it was really fun and, and you know, bold. Um, and so then I went in with another paintbrush and I just uh, took my Mod Podge and traced over my ribbon. And then definitely make sure you get kind of every spot because the glue can dry. And then I took my glitter again, dumped it all over it, and then shook off the extra. And I also kind of added in some touch-up spots um, where the glue had dried up. <laughs> and then just, yeah, tapped it in, shook it off, and there you go. So once that is dry, you're going to go in with your clear acrylic seal and spray or some hairspray and seal on that glitter just so none of it falls off. And you can kind of keep that same fun glittery look and not lose all your glitter. <laughs> so yeah, I really like this piece. I think it definitely stands out. It's very bold. And again, you can customize it to whatever words you want or whatever design. But to me, this, I, I'm really happy with how it turned out. So I think it's fun. It's definitely a statement piece in my decor and I can't wait to show you how I decorated with it. So yeah, that's our first DIY and I hope you guys enjoy it. So let's keep going. So for our next project, we are going to be making a ribbon garland. So you are going to need an array of gold ribbons. I found a bunch of these at Joann's and Hobby Lobby, starting with a tool that is from Hobby Lobby. And then the wide ribbon is from Joann's Then the polka dot is from Joann's Christmas. And then the other, the pineapple and the glitter, those are from Hobby Lobby. The next four are from Joann's. The second to last one is from the Joann's Christmas. The bow ribbon is from Hobby Lobby and the cord in the back is from the Joann's Christmas section. Yes, covered all of them. Let's 
let's get started. <laughs> so basically I took my rope cord and I measured the area where I wanted to hang my garland, which was over my mirror or in front of my mirror. Um, and so yeah, definitely get started with that. And then um, this next part, I just sort of eyeballed and just kind of went on a whim. So I took one of my ribbons, folded it in half and sort of played with the size a little bit and um, decided upon how long I wanted it. And I folded it in half. So now you're going to cut another strand of ribbon, the exact same length, fully. You're not going to cut them in half. You're going to cut one long piece of ribbon and you're going to repeat this step over and over again. Um, and so, yeah, so you can see here, I'm just taking my one master ribbon and then I'm laying out all my other ribbons and cutting them the same size. I will leave the exact length um, that I ended up using in the my in my description box because I don't really remember it offhand. Um, and again, you're just going to repeat this for every single ribbon. And so if you don't want to do as many patterns as I did, that's up to you. If you don't want to, um, you know, do so many different kinds, that's up to you. Whatever you want, this is uh, definitely customizable, just like pretty much every other craft I do. Um, it's it's up to your liking and it's, you know, a, a base plate <laughs> to start from, I guess. So yeah, I have all different kinds. I've got wired, I have glitter, I have tool, I have rickrack, um, prints, pineapples, bows, <laughs> everything, all different kinds. Um, and yeah, just, I know this process is lengthy, so I don't remember how many ribbons I showed in that first clip, um, but I did have a good amount. I, uh, maybe 10. <laughs> Not really sure. I could probably sit and try and count, but yeah, I don't know. I love this bow one by the way. And just be a little careful with the Hobby Lobby ribbons because I had to buy one of my ribbons twice since the way that they had put it on the roll. Um, it was like, it didn't match. And so they just kind of added another layer. It was a little awful. <laughs> anyway, so to get started on your next step, you're just going to kind of decide where you want to stop tying your ribbon. So the extra part from the edge of the ribbon to the edge of the cord is the part that I'm going to use to hang it. So I was going to tape it on the back of my mirror. And so I just left all that space to tie it and sort of wrap around. And then I'm not going to go past those two end pieces of ribbon. Um, and so I kind of tried it out this process first just by tying it on, but I really didn't like that look. It looked a little sloppy. So I'm kind of taking it right here, holding it together and then pulling the bottom two pieces through that little loophole, which is um, kind of symbolic of the actual cancer ribbon, to be honest. It looks like the one that I just drew on the canvas and it works the best. It's like the best method ever. I had no idea how to make one of these. I've seen them before. I've seen different ideas, but um, I, yeah, I've never really looked into them or read about them or how you make them or anything. I just kind of bought a bunch of ribbon, played around with it and came up with this. <laughs> so this is sort of my layout of, you know, what they look like. So I kind of mixed in the ones that had the white ribbon with the gold detail in with like the glitter and the tool and all those other things. So yeah, that's kind of like my base, you know, starting point and what I'm going to go with. And I'm just going to repeat that same set over and over and over again through that whole piece of cord all the way to that next uh, end ribbon. So yeah, it's kind of a, a tedious step as well, but it's totally worth it. And it's, it's actually really fun, but just be warned lots of glitter is involved. <laughs> if you go with the glitter ribbon, it is going to get absolutely everywhere. So right here, this one is the big culprit of all the glitter and that is the wired ribbon. Um, and so this one, you're just going to have to kind of manipulate and play with a little bit because you have to bend the wire and just sort of, you know, like form it to the cord, I guess. So yeah, it just took a little bit of work, but it was a lot of fun and totally worth it. And then over time, you'll see all the glitter that ends up on the table because even the tool has a lot of <laughs> glitter as well. It just sort of kind of gets everywhere. And then for the rick rack, you are going to knot it. Um, once you kind of do like your little loop tie, you're going to knot it just because it doesn't really stay that well. Um, and that ribbon that I just tied there, that is the one from Hobby Lobby that I had to go buy a second roll of because of the way that they had put it on the spool. And then this poor bow ribbon, I thought it was so perfect. The little bow was at the top, um, but unfortunately I had to tighten it to secure it to the rope. So I, I was not able to save the, the perfect bow in the middle, but it's okay. We get the point, Lauren. <laughs> um, and so now here is the tool. And again, this is where all of the glitter came off of that thing. And this one too, the little uh, polka dot one had a lot of glitter fall out. But yeah, so that is another step. And then I realized I totally forgot this starburst uh, looking ribbon. And so I found a spot and then I just sort of moved around and kind of slid the ribbon down on the cord just to kind of add it into each of my like little sets because of course I had to have it the same. <laughs> so as you can see there, I have added it in with the other ones and sort of mixed it in. But yeah, this is my final product and I'm actually really happy with this. Again, I haven't read anything about these like as far as like how you do them or, or if this is exactly how you do them. But this is what I figured out and this is what worked best and I really liked it. It was very fun and I can't wait to make more of these for other occasions, but uh, this one's definitely very special and has a very special meaning behind it. So I love it. I think it's great. It's beautiful. So many 
different shades of gold and prints of gold and looks great. So yeah, that's my ribbon garland and let's move on to our final craft. So for our last and final project, we are going to be making a no sew fleece blanket. And this craft does have a special meaning that I do explain at the end of this video. So definitely stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, so basically all you're going to need are two pieces of fleece, both two yards and some scissors and maybe a movie or TV show to watch as well because it is a long process. Um, so to begin, you're going to start cutting off this white trim that is at the top of your fabric. And so this one's pretty easy to see because again, it is white and it doesn't match the fabric. So cut it off. You don't need it. It goes in the garbage. Um, but then it basically has like the same thing at the bottom of the fabric as well, but it's not white. So you're going to kind of see how the fuzz ends right there and then it kind of goes like folded and frayed and everything. So you're going to cut that off. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that's called the selvage. I did take a fashion and sewing class when I was a freshman in high school. <laughs> um, it's That was a while ago, but I do believe it is called the selvage. And so you're going to just cut that off in one big cohesive piece because you don't really need it and it kind of messes up the look of the blanket. And you're also going to do it on the other piece of fabric as well. Um, I chose to do two different fabrics because I thought it worked well together. It wasn't so busy and crazy. You do have like that nice solid color. Um, but again, that's up to you, whatever you want, whatever you're liking. Um, but I love that these two are in the same family. So yeah, cutting off that one. <laughs> and then we're going to go cut off the top or the bottom on the other one as well. Um, and yeah, you'll even see like when you flip it over, one side will be even fuzzier than the other one and one will be not so fuzzy. So the one that's the fuzzier one is definitely like, you know, the top of the fleece. Um, but yeah, once you get that cut off in one big piece, you're going to match up your fleece together and just sort of make sure that the two um, like top parts of the fleece are facing outward and that the other side are facing inward and touching each other. Um, and then you're going to kind of sort of cut this like square on each corner of the fleece. So wherever they meet in all four corners, but I would recommend cutting it a little larger than the square that I cut it. Definitely make it a little bit more of a rectangle. And then you're just going to begin cutting little strips into both pieces of the fleece. And again, make them a little longer because you're going to want to double knot each of these ties. And if you cut them any shorter, you're not going to have enough space. Um, and also pay attention to, because if you see the top of the paisley, like the, the pointy part is the top, um, and the top and the bottom, when you tie the two pieces together, they have a little bit more give, a little bit more stretch, and that's easy and perfect to tie those. But on the two sides, cut them a little longer as well, because um, it doesn't stretch as well that way. It doesn't have a lot of give. So you need as much extra, you know, fabric to make that uh, tie, the double knot. Um, and you can kind of see here, this is creating the corner. Um, and you can kind of sort of stretch out the fabric as you go, just to kind of give it a little bit more space. And you kind of see it starts to like gather together. It looks really, really cool. But again, yep, there's a little stretch. And then you're just going to repeat this for all four sides and all four corners. It's very easy. And again, here I am starting the side. And I really should have made them a little longer, but you know, you live and learn. My sister usually makes these blankets for gifts, um, for like all sorts of occasions. We are a blanket family. So these ones are fun. They're personal. You can change up the fleece, whatever patterns and colors and schemes you want to do is great. But yeah, this is like my first time actually making one of these and, uh, definitely recommend music or a show <laughs> to watch while you go and, uh, just keep tying because it is a large blanket, but trust me, it's worth it. Just like the other two, the steps are totally worth it. And so you can kind of see, um, we're still on the side here because you can tell by the way, the paisley stuff is pointing. Um, definitely cut them a little longer because you're going to need that extra space to tie. And again, it doesn't have much give. And so then, um, we're going to go back over to the top and continue working. I just sort of alternated that way. Um, I can kind of keep the, the two fleeces together sort of lined up correctly and I don't accidentally pull part of it um, and end up with a, a cockeyed blanket, I guess, so that the fabrics stay in the same spot. Um, and so, yeah, so you're just going to repeat the step over and over again. And then this is what it looks like at the end. And you're going to have all four sides all tied up, <laughs> all corners, and it's going to form a blanket. And so this is a very difficult, uh, item to show you as like a whole, it is huge. So definitely, um, yeah, this is it. <laughs> Take your time on it, but also, you know, make sure you cut enough pieces. So those are all four sides. And I'm really glad that I went with the two um, different fleeces because when you tie them, you can see that solid gold or yellow color kind of poking through on the ties. And I like that. It kind of breaks it up a little bit. It's not just all, you know, pattern or whatever print you decide upon. We really wanted like a yellow and white polka dot, um, but this paisley pattern was like my next favorite one. So yeah, you can kind of see like the little yellow backside as well. And here is another picture of it. Again, this is a very difficult, difficult item to photograph and take a final picture of, but I really, really like this one. So yeah, that is that. 
So those were my three DIY projects. I really hope you guys enjoyed my aunt. Well, she's not really my aunt, but she's practically family at this point. She contacted me a couple weeks ago because a friend of hers, Josephine, had met this really sweet girl named Destiny, and she has childhood cancer, and she promised her that she wanted to bring more awareness to the disease. And so she contacted me and said, why don't we do a little bit of awareness and outreach and whatnot? And so Josephine and I have been working together to kind of help bring awareness to childhood cancer. And so the two, the canvas and the banner will be going to Destiny since I think that she needs to have these little fun decor pieces. So the blanket sort of comes with a little story as well. Our good friends and neighbors lost their nephew to childhood cancer but before he passed he wanted to make sure that all children that are in the hospital had a blanket since you know, they go through a lot. They go through a lot of treatments, a lot of medications and things, and just sort of to have a blanket as comfort was something that was really important to him. And so they started doing this thing where they were having donations for blankets and they wanted to give them to kids in the hospital. So that's why I decided to do a blanket just because it is sort of symbolic for Team Scott and his organization that his family has been running. So the blanket will be donated to Scott's mom, Trey, and she can ha sort of have it as kind of like a little memento um, as part of like this outreach and childhood uh, cancer awareness month. So I will leave Destiny's information down below. I will leave Scott's team organization down below and so definitely check those out if you want to if you have time that would be great and I'll also leave Josephine's Facebook page linked down below as well and you guys can learn a little bit more about what she's trying to do about spreading the word about childhood cancer so I feel like I've just been like <laughs> run on sentences but I wanted to tell you guys as much information as I could as to why I've been doing this but I really hope you guys enjoyed I had a lot of fun doing this and I was so so grateful and thankful that Josephine and my aunt contacted me to get involved with this project so yeah I don't think I have much more to tell you guys if you guys liked this video definitely feel free to give it a thumbs up and if you want to subscribe to my channel definitely subscribe that way you'll be notified when I post new videos and I will also be doing a little mini room tour to show you how I decorated with some of these DIYs and you guys can watch that as well that'll follow this video so yes okay oops my hair <laughs> um if you guys want to follow me on any of my social media pages I will have all of those linked down below as well but yeah that is all I have I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you all in my next video